Hopefully, Kubernetes will do its job well and make it easy for you to scale your application up to deal with the success that it so rightfully deserves. But with success comes risk, and you have to make sure that your data and your system are safe from people who would steal or harm it. We'll take a brief look at security concerns and how you'll deal with them specifically using Kubernetes. One obvious thing you should do is make sure all of your HTTP connections are encrypted. In the Amazon cloud, this is as easy as reconfiguring the load balancers that are created by services. Unfortunately, this is a manual process because Kubernetes won't do it for you. After you create your service, you wait for the ELB to be created, find it in the AWS console, and then configure the SSL certificate and the port 443 listener. Now there's a feature currently in Kubernetes that can help with this. It's called ingress. Now with this model, instead of creating your services as load balancer, you create internal only services, that is of type cluster IP, and then you configure ingress separately. Ingress controllers can do path-based and host-based routing, sort of like Nginx can, and they can be configured with TLS certificates, so you can do secure HTTP. As of this recording, however, ingress controllers will not create ELBs, so they don't completely replace the load balance service setup that we've got in our example, but this might have changed by the time you hear this, so it's worth a look. Moving down the stack, ask yourself what happens if an attacker gets control of one of your pods. In order to protect yourself against this kind of scenario, you need to control access to the things that each pod is responsible for. The best example of this is the database, but it's also one of the easiest things to fix. Just create a database user with restricted permissions and a good password for each microservice in your system. Then you only give those credentials to the containers that need them. You can use the Kubernetes secret system to accomplish this. This can protect against certain kinds of attacks. An example of this is perhaps an attacker can get access to one of your front end containers, but from there can't get directly into the database because that container doesn't have any credentials. Only the API container has credentials to the database. Another method of this is to use network segmentation. This is a way of controlling traffic between pods where you only allow whitelisted connection paths. There are several projects exploring this kind of feature and integrate with Kubernetes rather nicely. The next thing you should consider is locking down access to the Kubernetes administration tools. Now, Kubernetes doesn't currently have the concept of user accounts, so there's no paper trail for changes to the cluster. For example, you won't be able to know who scaled the API replication controller up to five instances, but it does have access controls. Using kube control requires a token, and different tokens can be configured with different permissions. Clusters created in AWS using the kube upscript have ABAC authorization turned on by default. ABAC stands for Attribute-Based Access Control, and it's a method that allows named tokens with defined permissions. Now in my cluster, the files that configure this are in slash serve slash Kubernetes on my master node. They might be in a different place on your cluster, but take a look, see what you can figure out. You can also enable a webhook mode for authorization. This lets you specify a URL that Kubernetes will post to to figure out if an operation can be authorized. The post payload includes details of who's asking and what they want to do, and the service on the other end can return a yes or a no. This allows for very customizable access control using any logic at all. You could even connect to your company-wide user directory and use group membership to gain access to different parts of the system. Finally, you should also protect the machines that your cluster is running on. The default cube upscript leaves all the nodes open to the internet and you probably don't want them all to have public IP addresses. So consider turning off all direct internet access to those machines. HTTP access from end users can go through the load balancers, and you can run management traffic through a VPN. Let's sum up. First, turn on secure HTTP for everything that you can. Second, make sure you lock down the connections between the containers in your system. Third, compartmentalize the permissions in the Kubernetes API and administration tools. And fourth, protect your nodes from unwanted access. In the next video, we'll talk about multi-tenancy or how to run more than one system on a single cluster.